Hi, Brad Neatstead, product specialist here at Kinsey, and today we're going to walk through the True Speed Meter on our 4905 series planner. The True Speed Meter introduction, really it starts at the Rodian in itself with our newly designed mini hopper. Kind of un some unique items from previous or our True Rate design mini hopper is we have a bulk fill hose swivel that allows us to pivot up our mini hopper so it's easier to work on, easier to troubleshoot. And then of course we have our smaller inch and a half vacuum hoses that come into the top of the mini hopper itself. Another unique feature with True Speed is we've added provisions to utilize or plant plots if you so choose. And of course, we always can't forget about planting sweet corn at the beginning of the season as well. So we've had our slide top lid on the top of our mini hopper that allows us to slide. It's retained and allows us to put a plot bag or that sweet corn into the top of this mini hopper lid to plant that short plot area or just fill a mini hopper to finish off a row if you're getting low on seed, things of that nature. So we designed it to make it easier to add seed at the row itself. So we can slide that lid back on. So let's kind of dig into taking that meter off of the row and dig into the meter a little more specifically. So the nice part is once we latch it, we again can rotate it up with everything connected and you'll see at the top or bottom, excuse me, lower left, there's a little what I would call a kickstand that actually holds the mini hopper up so you can work on it. So if we want to disassemble or check something out on that meter, it's one simple electrical connection that comes off. Of course, we have to disconnect our vacuum hose as well, which just simply pulls through the top of our mini hopper itself. And then to disassemble the meter, there's a simple lock tab on the lower left side of that meter. We press that down, rotate it a quarter turn, and then we can simply remove the meter housing itself. The nice part about this mini hopper design is all of the seed stays inside the meter. So if you were disassembling to check for debris or something was going on inside the meter, nothing falls out. It's all retained because our mini hopper stays locked up in its location. Really the unique part of the true speed meter starts with the disc itself. <clears throat> Along with the disc, really the shear meter orientation is significantly different than our true rate meters as well. You've seen, I dis unlocked it, disassembled it, and you notice it's perpendicular to our direction of travel. We'll get into that a little more here in a second. <clears throat> but as we look at the disc itself, first thing you obviously notice is our tall paddles. Okay, are our paddles on the disc. The big function of these paddles is of course to hold that seed in those pockets, especially as we get into a higher speed application. The other unique part is we can see our channels that really help funnel the seed into the pocket. Of course, we're using vacuum to retain that seed in the pocket. The paddle behind it helps keep the seed in that location, again, as you're traveling at higher speeds. If you look close as we get in front of the pocket, you can see really two stair steps in front of the seed. The nice part about those stair steps is it helps, if there was a double in these locations. So if, there's was, if there were two seeds in between these two walls or these two paddles, those stair steps help keep the seed up and really on a pedestal, kind of all by itself, which makes it a lot easier for our singulator brush to come around and knock off those doubles. Okay, so really a lot of technology built into the design itself to help with singulation. The nice part about that design with the paddles and, and the stair steps we talked about is our non-adjustable singulator that is inside our meter. So it uses brushes. What that allows us to do is our brushes are real aggressive, but with our paddle and disc design, it allows those brushes to be aggressive, but yet no adjustment required for any crop type. So for small to large seed ranges, it doesn't matter almost to the simplicity of a finger meter where it's a pour and go. Pour in the seed and go plant, okay? So no adjust singulator, it's a floating style singulator that again has around that four to 500 row acres of life. So for example, as we get into more serviceability items and we walk through the meter on this 24 row planter, majority of the components are 500 or more row acre components. So on a 24 row, you're over 10,000 acres of planting before you ever have to work on anything in the meter itself. So you have a floating singulator, no adjust, no crop changeover pieces for the singulator. To change our crop type, we have a short retainer. 
on our disc. We loosen that up, simply pull the disc off, and we have really on the inside our ejector wheel that hope, of course helps push out debris and anything that may get caught in any of the pockets. If we were to change crops, it's as simple as removing our ejector wheel, installing the ejector wheel for the associated disc. So for example, our soybean disc, putting our soybean disc on, and you're ready to go for, for crops. Another unique item with the meter design is really our continuous vacuum seal on this outer edge of the disc. So what makes that unique really compared especially to our true rate meters or other meters on the market is there's no lips, edges or anything to damage or really wear out at the end of the day. So it's a long life, durable seal built for the long haul, but again, built for high speeds. You don't have any lips or edges that any debris that maybe would get caught in a pocket uh, would damage that seal at any time. So really built for the long haul. And again, easy crop changeover with just the ejector and disc being required to change. The nice part is you go to put the disc back on, you can slide your retainer spring on and just simply press it on to the hub and it retains itself automatically, okay? So put this guy back together and we can move on to the delivery tube. The nice part about retainment, as you put it back on, it only goes on one way. There's alignment tabs on it to make sure you get it in the right location and we rotate it to lock it. Okay, so I'm gonna remove our mini hopper so we can get to the delivery tube. Again, with our swivel bulk fill hose makes it easy to take off. We just do a quarter turn and take our bulk fill hose off. I'll set this to the side on the bottom. Again, sticking with one electrical connection for our meter, we get into our delivery tube and one simple delivery tube connection and then the whole delivery rail and delivery tube comes out as one assembly. The nice part about anything on the delivery tube is it's toolless removal. So for example, if we want to inspect our delivery belt on the inside, we simply use one tab, slide down, and we can disassemble our delivery tube. <clears throat> if we look at, again, unique items to Kinsey and really goes back to our orientation of the meter to the delivery tube. You can think our meter is sitting perpendicular to our delivery tube and we use really a delivery brush or a wiper wheel brush design to help remove the seeds from the disc into the delivery tube itself. So I'm gonna disassemble it so we can get a little better look at what that looks like. Again, with our toolless design, our seed sensor, which is seated right here, is easily removable and easy, easy to replace. You don't have to replace any other components. It's truly a standalone item on our delivery tube. So <clears throat> I'll take our seed sensor off. Take our seed sensor off. Again, toolless design where we just slide our cover down remove our cover, and now we can really get into the inner workings of the brush wheel and the delivery belt. So of course, <clears throat> if you look close, it's a two-step or two-stage brush wheel. Okay, you have longer bristles here, shorter bristles over here. As that seed's coming around on that disc and in those paddles, the taller, longer brush acts like a wall, and our shorter brush acts as the wiper, all right? So <clears throat> seed's coming around, it engages that taller bristles, the short ones, gently wipe it off the disc into the delivery tube. The nice part about this design is the seed is always in control no matter what position the seed is in once it leaves the disc. So again, keeping consistent CLV, consistent spacing and accuracy <clears throat> no matter your travel speed. So anywhere from three to 12 miles an hour, we're always in control of the seed and always ensuring that our spacing is correct. The nice part about the brush wheel, number one, it has that gentle sweeping motion. It's gentle on the seed, but really the life expectancy of it as well. So we talked about 500 row acre life expectancy. Our brush wheel is no different. And the nice part is it's an economical parts cost replacement uh, to replace again at that 500 acre life. Of course, as our brush wheel goes down, we go into our flighted delivery belt. Some unique items on our flighted delivery belt, and it is Kevlar reinforced polymer designed belt. So the nice part about it, 
Once you assemble it and you set the tension, which it automatically sets the tension itself with our spring-loaded uh, tightener, you tighten it down with two Phillips head screws and you never have to change, remove, take the belt out at the, at the end of the season. None of that because of the durable and strong Kevlar reinforcement that's built into this belt. The other nice part about the belt design is it's really built for the long hauls. We have over 2,500 row acres on a lot of our belt deliveries and all the testing we've done and have still not failed or had to replace a belt because of wear. So it's really built for the long haul. The only time you have to reset the tension is if you would be replacing the belt itself. So super simple, super clean design. Another unique item, especially as we get into a lot of the different seed treatments and those type of things that farmers are dealing with <clears throat> on an annual basis, and those coatings and items are changing, different treatment methods, how soon or how late the seed had been treated before. Obviously, we could possibly deal, deal with some brush buildup. So we've made sure to keep that address by using this stainless steel comb that's inside our delivery tube and of course runs through the brush all the time. It ensures we keep any debris or any treatment buildup from getting carried away on that brush wheel. And then any debris of course can certainly just simply fall out of the brush wheel itself on the backside of our delivery tube. Okay. So built for the long haul, the other unique item as we've looked at electrical connections, we kind of get into what is driving these meters. It's still a 24 volt system like we used uh, on all of our other previous electric drive um, equipped planters. The unique part though is we've gone to a 24 volt brushless style motor. So if you can think of it like the brushless power tools that you're used to in your shop, we use brushless motors. It's the same motor as on the delivery tube as it is in the meter itself. So all the parts are the same, they are interchangeable, as well as the gearboxes that we use to drive the meter and delivery tube are the same. So <clears throat> keep it super simple, super easy to take apart. With a Phillips screwdriver, you can pretty much take apart and replace any component on delivery tubes, and they are all separate. So they're easy to replace just one instead of having to buy entire assemblies, okay? So let's put this guy back together. We put our cover back on. Again, it aligns itself up. You know it's in place because it clicks itself into place. We put our seed tube sensor back on. Again, there's alignment tabs that ensure you have it aligned correctly. We put our retainer bolt back into the seed sensor. Take our delivery tube guide, slide that in. We click it back into place and we're ready to go back in the row unit. Some unique items we've added to ensure that our delivery tube goes into the right location every time is there's a rail system that really is mounted in the row unit permanently. So when you go to install or put that delivery belt back in the row unit, when you put it back into the row unit, once you get it started, you can simply let it go and it will automatically align itself correctly every time you put the delivery tube into the row unit. We have a single, again, connection for our delivery tube. The nice part about it is, as you notice, when you push down or push front to back on the row unit, you'll notice that the delivery tube is spring-loaded. The big function of that is when we rotate our mini hopper down, that spring tension helps ensure that we align both horizontal, vertical, and make sure that there's a good, smooth, clean face on that interaction. So we put our mini hopper lid back on. Again, with our puck design and our kickstand, you can put that up so it holds. Put our electrical connection back in, lift our kickstand up, rotate that down, take our vacuum hose, reinstall it onto our mini hopper, bulk fill back on our swivel connection, latch it down, and we're ready to go to the field.